Hey guys, Coffee here uh, with the newest version of the Coffee Hut. Uh, we've done a really big uh, update uh, and I just wanted to kind of go over uh, the updates to the HUD, but also just kind of give uh, another overview for, for new users just to kind of talk over some of the stats. Um, I'll also go through and, and discuss a little bit how to use these stats um, and how to uh, better put people on ranges using this HUD. All right, so to start with, I'm just going to show you how to set up your new HUD, the new version. So you just have to go to HUD, Edit HUD Options, and uh, in the little box that pops up, make sure to pick Profile Select Tournament. Um, and then here you can set up um, you know, what type of situation you want your HUD in. And so you just have to scroll down to Coffee HUD 2.1 and just do Add. Um, so I've got a whole bunch of mess here. I'm just going to delete most of it and just um, add it. I think I already have it here. But, uh, but yeah, basically you can just um, set up your filters um, for when you want it to pop up in game. You can pick your sites, your limits, um, all this kind of stuff. And then you can just add it as a HUD. And then this will uh, make it pop up by default in, um, in your stars or whatever. Um, notice too, uh, when you're in PT4, you can also make it the active profile for um, reviewing hands as well. Uh, and that's simply just by clicking on the little wheel. And then you can just change the profile um, in here, you know, if it's default something else, and then you can just make active profile for default, uh, for table type as well. Um, it's worth noting that you can move around the boxes just by holding control, um, or you can uh, unlock the layout and then you can just click and drag things around, and at the end, you can just lock and save the layout to have it saved by stacked up. Um, next is VPIP, that's just a standard, you know, um, it's the inver I mean, it's one minus the full open fold frequency. So just how, how much they're playing hands. Uh, preflop raise is just a very simple preflop raise. How often are they raising? That will include three X's, open shoves, min raises, all of that. Um, and so what it's really useful for is identifying if your opponent is doing stuff other than min raising and how often. And you can do that by looking at the preflop raise and subtracting min raise and open shove to get an idea of how often they're three xing, for instance, or two, you know, two point five xing. Uh, min raise includes up to two point two five x, I think. So um, it's it's stack depth dependent. Uh, it's shorter stack depths. It's it's more sensitive. Um, but yeah, if they open like you know forty, you know, min raise plus a chip, it'll still count it as a min raise. Don't worry about that. Um, it's this is just for identifying the actual like big sizes. Um, further on, we go to the lip column, and again, all these are, are filtered by uh, stack depth. Um, the only thing is, you can see zero to eight. We've um, uh, com we've just gotten rid of open shove uh, because basically every preflop raise that's not a min raise is basically an open shove, right? I mean, if they three x, it's very very similar strategically to an open shove. We might play slightly differently. We might still have a flatting range, but in terms of you know understanding how much money our opponent's putting to the pot and stuff. Uh, that's sort of the most important thing. So, um, so I've gotten rid of. So, so it just has open shove sort of folded into preflop raise. Uh, as we continue going on, we've got limp. That's just the total limp frequency. Um, limp trap is an indicator of what percent of uh, the limping range is uh, a trap. Limp fold is limp fold to non all in ISOs. So that's how often they fold it to your non all in ISOs. Um, be aware that you know when you're trying to use this strategically, it depends on uh, sizing. Right? So if you want to think about you know, how much your opponent's folding, you also want to think about what sizing are you using in general for your not on ISOs. And that'll tell you, you know, if they're folding too much or too little or whatever. Um, then this is fold versus all in ISO. Um, and of course, if you hover over any stat, uh, both in game and, and off the table, um, it'll tell you the exact sample size. So you can see um, the exact value of how often this was. Um, so obviously these are quite small sample sizes because this player wasn't limping much. Um, next up is limp raise. So this is how much uh, they limp, and then if you ISO not all in, they shove over. Again, be aware it's going to be based on a little bit based on your sizing too. But that's a really good indicator of you know it's it's another way of thinking how many traps they have, uh, but also just thinking you know how often do they limp shove their value or their bluffs. Um, fold the, and then we get to a play versus non all in three bets. Uh, so versus three bets in general. Sorry. So this is fold to non all in three bet. Um, again, 
sizing dependent, so be aware. Uh, and then there's full to three bet shove, uh, and then there's four bet. So those are really important stats. Uh, and then on the big blind preflop section, we've got VPIP, and this is where you need to be very aware. This is VPIP versus a min raise. Um, if you use, the, if you ever look at total VPIP for big blind, um, for heads up sit and goes, it's not going to work very well because total VPIP will include times where our opponent limped and we checked back. Sorry, that will be a negative VPIP, and if we ISO, it'll count as VPIP. So that really skews the statistic, because we want VPIP to tell us, you know, how often are they folding, essentially. Um, and so we're using a VPIP versus min -right specifically. Um, it also won't be VPIP versus open shove versus 3Xs. Um, we're sort of assuming that we're not 3Xing much, so we're not really worried about knowing how often they play to 3Xs. Um, that's something that, you know, if you really do want to incorporate to your game, it might be worth making a pop-up as to, you know, as making your own custom stat, you know, play versus 3x. But uh, for most players, uh, min raise is most important. So we have VPIP versus min raise. And this is hands versus min raise. So oftentimes we'll get questions, you know, why are the hands in the big blind so different from the hands in small blind? Well, that's because these are hands versus a min raise. Um, if your opponent open folds, we don't really care about that hand. We didn't get sample off of it. Um, and if your opponent limps, it's counted over here. Uh, we have added a counter for the number of limp hands. So this is sort of your counter for a limp. This is your counter for how many min raise hands there were. This is VPIP. This is just flat. That's how often they call your non-all-in min raise. Um, this is call open shove. Again, these are separate. Um, this is specifically versus open shoves, how often they've called your open shove. Um, this is their uh, three bet non-all-in frequency. This is three bet shove. Um, this is full to four bet. And then on the other hand, we have the limping section, and we've got ISO, uh, ISO non all in on the left, ISO shove on the right, um, and then we have uh, a new stat um, ISO slash fold. This is how often they've ISO non all in and folded to a limp shove. So that's um, a new stat, and that's uh, worth sort of using to understand how well, uh, what kind of range your opponent's ISOing non all in. We'll talk a little bit more about using these to build to understand ranges um, after after I go through the post flop. So um, continuing on, we can look at the kind of little small ones. There's a hero HUD. Um, the hero HUD only tracks uh, one session or lifetime stats versus all players. Um, there's no easy ways to make a hero HUD. And, and honestly, I mean, I think that hero HUDs are a little bit overrated. Um, a lot of the time, if you understand your own strategy, you know your own ranges, you should already sort of know your frequencies. You, sh you know, and in, in many ways, ranges are much more important anyways. If you know your own ranges, you don't really need to know your own frequencies. Um, there are ways to, to get around this um, uh, for post-flop analysis, for, for, sorry, post-game analysis. Um, you can make a new database and export from your basic database all hands versus a player, import them into the new database, um, and then you can look at your lifetime stats. And then, in fact, you can set up the coffee HUD to show you these lifetime stats um, simply by going into the edit head profiles section and making each group into show um, everyone or just hero. And so you can get hero stats versus specific players, just not in-game. And again, I strongly believe in-game they're not particularly useful. They can be very useful for post-game analysis, and that's still very possible. In-game, it's not the most important thing. But this is some basic indicator, um, and, and you can still have it. Um, and then this is, uh, for the villain, this is just a simple aggression frequency setup. Um, and, and it also it's worth noting that if you click on it, uh, there's a little pop-up that tells you how much um, uh, the player has won uh, in chips, uh, and then how much they've uh, lost in EV chips. So this is like the true winnings, and this is how... Um, how it's adjusted by EV. So that's a nice little indicator just to have an idea of how you don't need to check your graph this way. If you really like seeing your results for a supplier, you can um, just click on it. And otherwise it gives aggression frequency, which is the percent of the time they took an aggressive um, action. It's a good general indicator just to find is your opponent generally aggressive or not. All right, so let's take a look at post flop. So we've got, um, there's two stack groups. So this is small blind, this is all big blind. Um, and there's two groups, one for limped pots and one for raised pots. Um, so limp pot, we've got just uh, limp c bet, uh, fold to uh, check raise. This is fold to check raise on flop, fold to check raise on turn, fold to check raise on river. Um, so if you barreled and, and folded the check raise. And then this is barrel after check raising. 
a uh, hold to it. Sorry. So if your opponent raises, so if you raise him, how often, and they call, how often have they folded, have they folded to the turn barrel? Um, and this is to the river double barrel. Um, and then here we have delay C betting. Uh, so we have a delay C bet. Uh, so this is if you check back the flop um, and then stab when check two on the turn. Uh, and then this is how often you barrel after, the player barrels after they do that. Um, next we have fold versus donk. Um, this is just simple, on every street, how often they fold it to the donk. Um, this is how often they fold, fold it to the barrel after donking, and this is the river double barrel. So if they donk the flop, this is how often they barrel turn, this is how often they double barrel um, after donking flop. Um, this is raise versus donk, and of course it's by each street, flop, turn, river, um, how often the players raise your donks. Uh, this is fold to probe. A probe bet is when they uh, did not bet the flop. Uh, for limp pots, did not limp see bet or stab when checked to. Um, and then uh, how often they folded then to the probe bet. So you bet the turn um, after they check back flop. How often are they folding? Um, and then this is how often they fold to the river probes. This is how often they bet the flop, check the turn, and then fold it to a river lead. Um, this is barrel, so this is after they fold to the probe, how often they fold to the river barrel. And these are new stats. Uh, we've, we've updated the limp pot stats to have more of these, um, so this is a new update. And then lastly, we have uh, some iso pot stats. We have full to c-bet and iso pots and raise versus c-bet uh, on each street. All right, and then we get to the raised pot uh, section for the small blind. We have the c-bet frequencies, swap turn river. Um, we have Fold uh, versus check raise, flop turn over, just like in limb pots. We have barreling. Um, we also have three betting. Uh, so this is how often they three bet, so they raise a check raise. Um, and this is how often they three bet the turn. Um, river, generally, there's very little three betting. And it's not super relevant, it's super small sample. Um, then we have delay, delay. Um, this is a, a new stat. Um, it's uh, delay, this is bet, check, bet. So this is when you, um, how often they bet the flop, check the turn, and then bet the river when check to. So it's uh, it's like a delayed double barrel, essentially. They, they bet the flop, but then didn't double barrel the turn. Instead, they bet the river when check to. Uh, and then this is barreling after delay C betting. Um, then we have fold versus donk again. Um, fold versus the turn barrel and uh, the river double barrel, just like in lead pots. Raise versus dog, fold versus probe. Again, probing is defined the same way. It's when they check the flop, um, how often do they fold to a turn lead? Uh, if they uh, bet the flop, check the turn, how often do they fold to the river lead as a river probe? Uh, and then this is the barrel after turn probing. And then again, we have uh, three bet pot stats, fold to C-bet, raise versus C-bet. Um, and then on the right, we have the, the big blind stats. Again, you can obviously rearrange these. Uh, it's worth, by the way, um, just pointing out that you can hold down control to move groups around uh, without needing to lock unlock. Um, obviously, after you do, you should save it. Um, and yeah, so uh, and then uh, you can see folding to c bats, uh, raising versus c bats, um, barreling. So this is barreling after the flop check raise, and this is double barreling after the flop check raise. Um, this is fold to three bet, fold versus delay. This is fold to bet check bet that we talked about. Um, this is fold to double barrel delay, delay C bet barrel. Um, these are donk stats, donk and barrel. Again, this is barrel turn after flop barreling, and this is double barrel. Uh, this is donk folds. So this is how often they fold donk and then fold to a raise. Uh, these are probing stats, so we talked about what probes are, this is how often they lead the turn after you check back flop. Um, and this is how they lead river after you check turn after betting flop. Uh, and then we have the delayed barrel, I'm sorry, I just restarted. Okay, so, um, so anyway, so there's donking, probing, and barreling, um, c-betting, and three-bet pots. Uh, and then again, limp pot. For big blind, again, analogous to the small blind, we've got fold to limb c-bet, raise limb c-bet, barrel, double barrel, uh, fold to delay, um, fold to delay and barrel, donk, donk and barrel, donk fold, uh, probe, probe and barrel, uh, and then c-bet and iso pots. Um, and then here is the effective stacks counter, and uh, you have to be sometimes careful with when blinds go up with it. Uh, but then you can click on it, and you can um, get a chart with uh, 
the Nash pushfold ranges, um, as well as just some uh, simple odds and outs uh, chart uh, that can help if you um, need to count some equity. So that's uh, so this, this is the number of outs you have, how much equity you have on the flop, how much equity you have on the turn, and some examples of hands that would have those outs. So just some, some added resources uh, to help you uh, in-game. All right, um, so that's it in terms of describing the HUD. Um, so I wanted to give you some basic pointers for how to use a HUD that I think some people miss out on. Um, so one of the most important things I just wanted to talk about is um, looking at more than one stat at a time when trying to put people on ranges. What I mean by this is oftentimes we'll face, for instance, in a preflop strategy, um, a situation where opponent will have some min-raise range, some limp range, some open shove range, and frequencies stop being so clear-cut. We're not sure if our opponent's min-raising the top 45%, or the bottom 45%, or middling 45%, or a polarized 45%. Frequencies aren't always going to tell us the whole story in those kind of situations. But what they can start telling us um, is they can still tell us about the range when we look at other stats together with them. So what we can start looking at is how often they you know, fold to different responses. So I can look at his limp, you know, this player's limping range, and what I'm interested in is how often they fold to non-all-ins and all-ins. And this will often tell me you know, how strong is his range or how weak it is. It will also often tell me polarization. If a player has um, a, a very similar frequency for folding to shoves as folding to non-all-ins, that usually implies a polarized range. Um, the reason is that if they're, lim if they're playing a range that has a lot of very strong hands and a lot of very weak hands, um, they're going to play, if you shove, they're going to play all their strong hands and fold out their weak hands. And if you ISO non-all in um, a small size, they're still going to play all their strong hands and they'll still probably fold almost all of their weak hands if their hands are weak enough. Um, and so when you find players who have very similar um, fold to non-all in as fold to shove, you can get an idea that their range um, is, is more likely to be polar. Whereas if you have a big difference, like for instance here, this implies that likely our opponent is limping more of like a maybe middling merged range, um, where they're able to flat a lot of non-all ISOs because they limp a lot of middling hands, um, but they can't call shoves maybe as much because they don't limp trap. Um, so that's a really, really good way to try to get, you know, figure out how your opponent is constructing their range. Even more simplistic ones are, you know, if you look at villains full to four bet, that'll tell you about how strong approximately, up to sample size issues, their three bet non-all in ranges. We can see that, you know, it's a 6% frequency that might be very nutted, and hey, he's never folded to a four bet, so it's probably really nutted. Um, and so you can very quickly identify um, you know, even just, you know, frequency with which they are likely bluffing versus, um, you know, value betting when you have enough sample on their full to four bet. Um, so, uh, so that's really what some of, you know, really good way of approaching um, stats is, is to use as much information as possible to make your picture complete. Try to figure out, you know, how, if my opponent had a certain min raising range, how would it respond to folding to three bets and stuff like that? Um, and that'll tell you more about the 3-bet range some, and the minerize range sometimes than the frequency. What frequency will give you is, um, is sort of, uh, it'll tell you how, um, how strong or uh, how, how maximally strong a range could be. Right? Um, what's nice about frequency, if you have a 78% minerize frequency, for instance, um, you know that their range can't be top 20%. Right? Um, you know that at strongest, it's essentially top 80% of hands. Um, and so that's, you know, one really, really good way of using frequency. But it's very, very important to note that just because a frequency is low does not necessarily mean that the range is very, very strong. Um, it could still be that, you know, your opponent's just only bluffing with their range, friends. And so it's really, really important to try to identify, you know, what they're doing with the rest of their, you know, how they respond to different actions. Um, you know, how, and that, that'll clue you into how they build their range. Well, I hope you enjoy this new update to the Coffee Hut. Uh, if you have any questions regarding how some of these stats function, just uh, uh, post about it and I'll try to respond to you. Uh, if any other questions you have, uh, you can feel free to also email uh, membership at hsng.com or just coffee at gmail.com and uh, we can help you with any other things. Uh, best of luck to everyone. I hope you uh, get a lot of value out of this new HUD and uh, cheers.